Hi everyone, it's Kasia from Tarot Map and I'm sitting in this old olive grove. I was just walking around to find a quieter spot so I can record this video. Um, and it's season in Croatia right now, so there's so many more tourists that you know there used to be before, and it's really hard to find a spot at the sea to record a video in peace. And I had a lot of requests to actually um, do a walkthrough and share my thoughts on this Top Journey Oracle of Change deck that I received from my friend uh, Maxine. So this deck can be purchased on Etsy. Uh, I will receive this Oracle of Change, kind of like a certificate or whatever, that it's a number 69 of the 200 from the first edition. It came out uh, in 2020, as you can see. It's signed by the creator and by the artist. And this is also the artist's um, website that you can take a look at. And I will link the link to the Etsy shop for you to take a look. I'm not, you know, I didn't get it for review. I'm not affiliated with them, but just for your convenience, I'm going to link the Etsy shop uh, underneath the description box as well. So uh, Maxine, who my friend who has sent me this deck, she thought I will like it. And I actually really do. And also Maxine, if you wanted to check what she does, um, she's on Instagram under um, couple of different accounts but I will link both of them in the description box as well because if you like beautiful pictures she also always finds interesting decks and uh, I yeah I highly recommend checking out her accounts and giving her some love so the top journey the oracle of change arrives in this huge box because it comes with a really um, substantial guidebook and as you can see um, the box is big, two part. Uh, it says here that the distinctive visionary work is a unique collaboration between astrologer uh, Joanna Kate Grant and artist Aya Lu. Designed specifically for exploring difficult themes of transformation and change, the vivid combination of art and story helps the reader to invoke the richness of their own creative wisdom, to light their own way home. Five years in the making, this collection of wholly original work has been developed from a meticulously, meticulous intuitive, intuitive exploration of the 78 cards of the Crowley Harris Top Deck. So that's pretty cool because we rarely get decks inspired by the Top. Now we're getting more and more um, of these decks, but it's still compared to Rider with Smith, it's a you know tiny, tiny amount. Uh, so it's drawing on 30 years of esoteric knowledge, the visions that Joanna discovered within the cards eventually flowered into the book, and it's quite a big book. Uh, Top Journey, the inspiration for a series of 79 paintings with which Aya interprets each story. So the box contains 336 page book, 79 card deck suitable for oracle or tarot use. And the cards arrive in this, um, you know, old Llewellyn style kind of um, thing without any bag. So I'm probably not going to be using this box, but still it's steady, you know, it arrived all in one piece. And I put the bag, the cards into, I think it was uh, coffee with full. Like she makes those really great bags. And I got this from Natalia, I think. Uh, so these are the cards. The cards, uh, 79 cards. There's one extra card based on top. This is the bags. And they gild it with this old gold. A car, you know, kind of like a moon child or star child tarot. And um, they frameless. They don't have borders. They have like little, you know, oh, that's the extra card. They have just the descriptions. Um, um, like the names on the back and the bottom and the number and when it comes to the paper some people will be oh it's too thin <laughs> i totally don't, don't care um it reminds me of old lower index you know it doesn't have the uh, the shine uh, it's kind of feels uh, papery right it's got the bend 
but it's also gilded so that's pretty cool and it shuffles really great because you can do a ripple shuffle with no problem and bridging with no problem for my liking it could have been a tiny tiny little bit thicker just because when you shuffle it like this way it bends it bends it doesn't get enough of the steadiness but i do prefer this type of thinner cardstock because when i use a deck i just want to riffle shuffle it and also it's easier to handle on the hands and i think all those 400 gms and 300 to whatever i think they're too thick for regular use so i would prefer the cards to be a little bit thinner but that's my five cents on the cardstock in the end the, uh, the more I use decks, the less I care about the cardstock because it hasn't happened to me yet that I actually worn out a deck, you know, because as you know, I always change decks and rarely stay with, stick to one deck for, you know, a very, very long amount of time. So let's go through these cards. They, as you can see, are not in order. And um, maybe before we go to the cards, I just briefly show you the book. So basically there is an, I love this actually quotation, in the middle of the journey of our life I found myself astray in a dark wood where the straight road had been lost sight of. Don't we all feel it at times, right? So she created or they created this oracle for times like this, for times of change, for times of initiation. As you can see, these are reimagined um, images from the top deck, so they don't remi rem like remind of top cards, but she did keep the color scheme and she kind of... Uh, she did like a uh, meditation with the card basically and walked into an image and like followed her intuition and feelings. So that's what I would kind of, how, how I would put it into words. Um, but um, she also re uh, renamed like, so she used very basic elemental associations, fire, water, air and earth and major arcana and there's a little bit about author and the artist and lovely each um, card gets this big illustration in color in the book and the quote like what when you read the cards you know when you read the story you just kind of go into her like vision a little bit so she describes uh, what she painted basically um, here you can see the water runs shallow at the point where she's standing so it's like poetic visionary kind of fairy tale like description of what she saw when she entered and focused on the cart so and then there is like a short divinatory meaning and you can of course get a lot of meaning out of the kind of story that she puts out um, but this is more like a succinct shorter version of what you can kind of take out as a symbolic meaning from this so for example this water three which you can see the image of here now of course there's sun <laughs> making funny shades Water 3 brings the message that it is important to relax, to have fun doing whatever it is that brings you pleasure. This may not be what others think of as fun, but it is important to follow your instincts on that. Remember that it's not necessary to be productive all the time and that you can take time off for, our, for out of expressing joy comes fresh ideas and renewed creativity. You never know what new inspirations you may discover. So this would be the like an oracle uh, version of Water 3. And as you can see, it's a little bit different to Rider Waite Smith, right? But it does um, maybe follow the more of the tough associations and keywords all on the cards. So that's oh, this magician is so cool. And then the same happens for the major arcana basically. So there's no too much difference between minors and majors. And that's it. There is no um, there's the extra card which is called Malaki and she encountered that figure. So it's like maybe her spirit guide uh, when it comes to the project. So this is um, this is the book and how the book looks. And now if we go into the cards, let me just bring this closer. 
so we have those gorgeous images how am i going to do that maybe i can see it let me see if i can bring it a bit closer still okay so we have we have water prints and you can see like after a while shit maybe here after a while you can see that um there's a lot of stuff to unpack here so when you just look first on the image often it seems quite abstract like there's nothing there only after a while you keep seeing i don't know for me now when i look at it i just see two boobs you know and the milk flowing out of them and doing like this whole like two snakes dance there is this bird here and a lot a lot of things so i usually i probably would use and how i managed to use this deck was mostly intuitive and i went for the book as well because i quite enjoyed reading those stories and i find some of the descriptions are really beautiful and some things i haven't noticed so when i read the description i'm like ah okay you know that makes sense so that's quite interesting to check with the book but very often i also go like very intuitively in the moment what something reminds me of and what would that mean to me and i think um there's a good way to approach decks like that i also i don't know if you um, are familiar with but i just published uh, maybe a week ago a new class on how to read unusual decks and um it is sorry just this microphone seems to it is a, a class where I use a couple of different abstract looking, unusual looking decks. Not this particular one because I haven't had it, but um, based on the other decks, I think you might find it interesting to take a look at this class. This class is only $15, so if you would like to check it out, if you liked also my creative tarot class, this might be another kind of installment, uh, an addition to it. You will enjoy it, I think, as well. I would love to you to let me know what you thought if you purchase this class. And uh, I hope you will, you know, like it. And then there is something that you will actually find um, inspiring and when you can learn something new. So how to use unusual, I mean, unusual decks and how to use them is up on my website. I will link it below as well. Look at the seven of air. I really like that. Um, it's kind of like ancestors or some you know like people in the like queue maybe but to me often that meant ancestral beings this earth prince i'm going to go a little bit faster with this and not focus on all the cards so much i did pull a few cards from this deck where the description were quite spot on but as I said, I love using it intuitively, even more than a tarot deck. This was one of my pulls, actually. When I used positions in a tarot, like in a spread, and it came out that it would be advisable for me to actually leave the safety of the Four of Pentacles. And I was thinking a lot about control, but just before I go into it, look at this lover's cut, so gorgeous. Love the colors. So yeah, I was looking at the sea, I was just thinking about control and how we, you know, get used to certain things like in the Four of Pentacles and how that starts kind of closing us off to life and how the sea is kind of always different, every day different, every day exciting, every day changing. And I feel like, oh, how can I be more like the sea, you know, how can I do that? So that moon card, I kind of love it, there's the dogs. Rather than crustacean, we have like this moth. It's the full water queen. Fire. Now that's the card that we looked at uh, in the book. F9, water 8. 
so the star is really beautiful just kind of the feel of the star i love when the cards capture how i see the cards you know so also for this air five that's also the feel you know with this pointy sharp bits when usually five of swords is seen as the card of maybe dishonesty or criticism or unfairness it's like hateful right so that's pretty cool the fire three is a little bit different and then the eight of air and then we have i love this earth princess so i called it in my like write up on instagram as like a feminine top <laughs> Just because top seems usually quite like logic, uh, magic, you know, rules, kind of quite masculine approach. Uh, and this reimagined top seemed like quite a feminine approach to the cards when maybe you lose the kind of esoteric side of it per se. Like, you know, she doesn't include here any um, Kabbalistic letters and stuff like this. But you gain that intuitive, visionary um, oracle-ish approach to to the cards which I find kind of cool you know it's not that I would choose this over top deck but I think it's a nice addition to to have if you love top deck as well because it just gives you so this is the death card and you know Frida Harris did such an amazing job with the with her art so it's not that I'm saying that oh this is better than top but uh, it does feel more feminine and more flowing and more um, focused on a just different level than top itself. So this is adjustment, totally kind of different. I like this emperor. And this magus, I don't know, this is like really, really beautiful. I find it beautiful. So some a little bit more abstract. Whoop, this this one always reminds me, you know, like a um, thread going through the eye of the needle. And it's fire eight, so it's like this initiation when you're like, kind of, it's happening now, you know. Hermit is quite nice as well. I don't know, I really find that um, just beautiful alterations of the traditional tough. And as I said, we don't get a lot of those, right? Uh, so here we have fire nine, this root of fire, water six, some bit more pipish. I love that sun cut, it's gorgeous. Two of water. And sorry for the, you know, imperfect walkthrough but it's just the nature itself nature is not perfect like this nature is quite chaotic it lets you do what it lets you do but f5 and then we have i love this two of fire as well something really beautiful about it and that kind of motion like sucking you into the portal this is Ace of Earth, so the three used the Root of Earth, Root of Water. And earthy cards are quite strongly, like I feel Earth. That's why I think I love this deck so much, because it's also like a little bit like a shimmering veil. It just gives you the elemental feel. Air 2. And then we have Water 10. That's interesting that water is so kind of deserty and then we have a princess root of water the hangman with the snake interesting take and then we have fortune which kind of if i saw when i saw it first time i thought oh that's tower but then no it's not tower it's fortune but we've got the mask as well and then kind of wheel in some way and all those strings that, you know, when the wheel turns, like there's so much more 
happening that we maybe sometimes see that it's happening. F10, F6. It would be nice, I think, to do a tough and, and I might do it at some point, like a tough, car, tough deck and this deck comparison side by side. So here is the tower with the huge wave. And there's the chariot, really beautiful. And this S6. Art, which I actually really like with all the elements. This water princess, which looks like Titanic. F knight. Beautiful. The Empress. Air free, free with the well. I love this card, of course. I don't know, it reminds me of the crypt also that I went to. Fire 5. Air Prince. The Hierophant. Looks a bit Moorish like that. Or like, I don't know, could be a Black Madonna too. And that Malachi, that extra card. So, that's just the walkthrough. For now, I, what I did, I used the cards as a singular draw, so I just was checking, um, you know, what the cards mean, and then I used this deck also in a spread when I had set positions, and it was actually really well readable. Um, I'm going to pull one card just to finish it off and show you how the book reads. So let's just pull one for us. So we have Root of Water, right? And now if I would like to uh, find water. Where is water, water, water? Root of Water. I'm going to hold the book so you can take a look. And you can stop or pause and, you know, give it a read because it's quite a lot of reading. I to lift it up. Sorry, guys. So the description in this book about the card, it says it indicates that a balance is required between keeping still and moving forward so that you may move forward with stillness. Being in harmony with your fate requires a deep sensitivity to your emotional foundation and through remaining flexible, you learn how to flow around obstacles that lie in your path. In acting, in acting when the time is right and being still when it is required, you gain the key to a peaceful heart. And that's the cut that we get for this. So the whole story that in, like, leads you into this card is also very fascinating. And I hope you like this deck. And, you know, if you do, let me know in the comments. I'd be curious to hear what you think. And I speak to you another time. Thanks for watching.